Hey ladies, let's have a quick conversation about healing. Pull up a chair. It's going to be quick and it's going to be good. I promise. If this is your first time here, hey there, I'm Mo James, Chief Confidence Coach, Certified Confidence Coach and founder of the Confetti Collective. Here at the Confetti Collective, we are all about empowering women like you to boost your confidence. We are a digital lifestyle platform and an e-commerce retailer. We've got some affirmation-based uh, minimalist jewelry in our shop. Check us out at theconfetticollective.com. But let's talk today really quickly about how sometimes the healing hurts worse than the wound. And I know that there are many of you watching that kind of had a childhood like I did, where you fell off bikes and you fell out of trees and you fell down. You did all kinds of things. You got skinned up knees and all kinds of stuff that, you know, we've been working with the shea butter and the cocoa butter to try to smooth those things out. But you know what I mean when I say sometimes the healing hurts worse than the wound. We remember being a kid and scraping our knees or scraping our elbows or cutting something and an adult coming around with that alcohol. And we were like, no, thank you. <laughs> you know, we would rather skip, we would skip the alcohol and skip the thing that's going to help clean out the wound and help it heal and help it heal better because we knew that it was going to hurt. So we skipped it. We opted out of our healing process because we knew that it was going to hurt a lot. And the crazy thing is we still do that. That's still our pattern as adults. And I'm not going to ask anybody to admit it in the comments. Let's just act like we talk about somebody else. But that's still our pattern. We still do that. We know that we are wounded or that we're dealing with something that we need to process. We need to work through. We need to heal. But we also know that that healing is going to hurt worse than the wound itself because we're going to have to peel back some layers and dig through some stuff and maybe tell some truths about some things that have been buried for a long time. And we don't want to deal with that. We don't want, we don't want any part of that. So we leave it alone. But here's the thing. Here's why that doesn't help us. Because just like when we were kids and we skipped letting mama Nam pour that alcohol on that wound, guess what happens? We delayed the healing or that wound got infected. The same thing can happen to us in our adult lives with issues like traumas or bad breakups or negative things that have happened in our past that we simply avoid going through the healing process. So what I want to do is offer you four tips to help you coach yourself through this process. I'm a certified confidence coach. This is what I do through this brand, but I want to give you some tips right now that you can start to apply to your life and coach yourself through that healing process and understanding that it's going to hurt but you're strong enough, you can deal with it. So the first tip that I want to offer you is to forgive yourself for not doing better. Some of us might be walking around blaming ourselves for the situation that caused the wound in the first place, right? We might be telling ourselves, we should have known better. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have let myself get caught up in this way or whatever we might, we're beating ourselves up about that thing. But this is, this is the truth. Nobody is perfect and everybody messes up contrary to what social media shows us, okay? So the first tip is to forgive yourself for not doing better. Even if you knew better, even if you knew better, but in that instance, you didn't do better, it's okay. Forgive yourself, free yourself up of that guilt so that you can move through the rest of your healing process. Second tip is to remember why your healing is important. Your healing might be the gateway to the next opportunity in your life. Your healing might be might give you the clarity of vision to be able to see who the right person is to have in your life. Your healing might allow you to be available and ready to help somebody in your family go through the same process. So when you remember why your healing is important and remember that there could be other people whose healing depends on your healing, that kind of gives you a higher sense of duty and responsibility and helps you stay stay in the process and be willing to endure whatever pain you might have to go through to get to that ultimate place of being healed. 
Tip number three is accept that you are a work in process. Nobody has it all together. Okay. Especially at the time of this broadcast, like the world is a dumpster fire right now. Nobody has all the answers. Nobody has it all figured out. Everybody is, is waking up every day, just waiting for the new situation, the new batch of shenanigans to happen. So recognize that you are a work in progress. You don't need to know everything right now, but the fact that you are moving in the right direction is all that matters. You are not stuck in that unhealed place. You are moving yourself in the direction toward your healing. That's tip number three. And then my last tip is to get support. Listen to me. Every hero needs to have a guide. Harry Potter had Dumbledore. Um, Wonder Woman had her mama and the rest of the Amazons on the island. Like every hero needs a guide. So I want to encourage you and give you permission. You don't need permission, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. Permission to find the support that you need. Find the person or the people that can show you the way, that can walk alongside you, that can link arms with you and say, listen, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to walk through this process with you and you got this. So those you are are my four tips to help you coach yourself through your own healing. And if you're watching this and you've gone through a process in your past, you've moved yourself through a, through a difficult situation, I, I drop in the comments what you did to coach yourself through that thing. I mean, because listen, your girl has done it all. Like I, I've done boxing. I was boxing. I was a boxer for a little while. I have, you know, tried prayer and meditation and journaling, self-medicated. Like, listen, I don't want you to penalize yourself for how you got through it in the past. You were using the tools that you had available. And now I've given you some new tools. So now when the time comes up again, hopefully you'll be able to use these new tools to help you heal yourself in a different, higher, more conducive way so that you can ultimately create the big, beautiful life that you deserve. So that's all that I have for you all. Like I said, drop it in the comments, talk, share what you've done. You don't need to tell your business and tell what the situation was. Okay. Keep that to yourself. But I, I, I'm sure that you have something that you've done, that you've tried, that can help another woman that is trying to work through her own healing. And that's what it's about to be in community together. We, we recognize that our testimonies can be the operating manual for somebody else. So drop your tips in the comments. I would love to hear them. If you're not connected with us, I would love for you to do so. Check us out at theconfettycollective.com. And until my next broadcast, I will catch you later.